Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of All Things Bodice. If you are new here, nice to meet you. I am JC. And guys, jumping right into this new episode, this one is going to be a fun DIY build. And you're asking a build of what? So, just so you guys get a glimpse. Yeah, it's going to be us swimming in our pool pond. Just kidding, guys. It's not going to be us. This pool pond is going to be for them. Yeah, you heard me right. All of these guys are going to be transferred over to that. Yep. And the reason for that is that, guys, these guys are growing. They're already big. They already outgrew this tank. This tank is only 350 gallons. And it's time for them to have a new home. They need to be comfortable and able to grow more, right? So I'm going to go ahead, do this DIY project, walk you guys step by step. It'll be my first time doing it, and I hope it'll encourage and motivate some of you guys to go ahead and do projects like this, right? Because I've seen it online, and it's something that's always intrigued me, and I've always wanted to do. So no more rambling about this. Let's jump right in, guys, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Good morning, guys. So following day, we're starting up early and fresh. Yesterday was a little late, the sun went down, but we went ahead and took advantage and went to Home Depot, got some stuff that we needed. But today we're starting bright and early and we are building the pond, putting it together. Uh, we got the instruction man is here. She's the go-to for instructions. I don't really follow instructions. That's why I always uh, struggle to put stuff together. But thanks to her, she uh, she's good at that. So yeah, guys, we're gonna jump in get this done so we can start filling it up with water and get all the stuff rolling. So just like that guys, full pond is built. You guys saw it. Uh, it worked a lot better doing it in twos. So if you have someone else that can lend you a hand for the build, I highly suggest that while one person goes inserting the pieces, the next person can go guiding you for the following step. It looks great. I'm pretty excited about it. We, uh, we obviously check to make sure that there's no parts missing. Uh, we'll eventually now check it for leaks. But most importantly, since this is gonna be placed on uh, concrete out here, we make sure to rinse off the concrete. There is no debris, nothing that will pierce the bottom of the, uh, of the pool pond. Because as you know, once you fill this up with 600 gallons of water, it's going to be a lot of weight pressing down on the bottom. And this is like a tarp material. Last thing we need is for that to tear. So what we're going to be doing, uh, we got some insulation foam from Home Depot. And we're going to go ahead and place this underneath the pool pond, not only to help it from not getting pierced from anything on the concrete, but as well as it's, it's insulation. So it'll help me maintain that temperature inside of the pool pond. Okay guys, so now we're gonna lift the pool pond up, get this underneath there and see if we need any more of this. If we have to go grab some more, we'll go grab some more real quick at Home Depot. The insulation now put underneath the pool pond, we're gonna go ahead and the pool comes with the option if, if, if with a filter, the initial filter that it comes with, you could either purchase that, but obviously we're not using that for that. We're gonna be making our own DIY canister filter. So it comes with these plugs to plug it for the water, but I wanna be on the safe side and I'm gonna cement these with a the PVC cement into here because last thing I would need is for any of my fish to go ahead and swallow one of these things and empty out the pool pond. So as safety precaution, we're gonna go ahead and PVC cement this which I'm hoping it works. Go and put the cement, not only on here, but also on the hole. So let's go over to the hole. shove this in there more 
moving on to this filtration, we went ahead and went with a 45 gallon plastic trash can, trash bin uh, from Home Depot. And the reason why we went with this is because it's big, it can hold water and it can hold a lot of media. So we put it up on center blocks. I got two stacks of center blocks here, cheap. Put it up here. The reason why it's elevated is it's gonna work like a wet dry gravity canister. So up here, the pump inside the pond will bring the water in. It'll drain through the media floss down to the bottom. And then from there, it'll come back out onto the pond. I'm gonna be doing one in, a one and a half in through the top. And then I'm gonna have two one and a halves coming out to the pond. Now I marked where the two drains are gonna be stationed at. So I did it right above the pool pond here. So I'm gonna drain these two holes with a hole saw. So that's one hole. And just like that guys, we have our two holes. The two holes here, these are gonna be our drains out. And now I'm gonna make the top one, which is gonna be our drain in, all right? I went with a one and a half uni seal. I didn't go with bulkheads. I went with a cheaper version of a seal and I got these on Amazon as a five pack. It wasn't too expensive. And from the reviews I had seen online, they work. And I'm gonna be trying them out for the first time. So I'm gonna go ahead and place them inside. Just like that. We got one. And we got two. So the instructions do state that once I go ahead and stick the uh, PVC pipes in through the holes, that I should lubricate it at least with like uh, hand soap or something so that it's easier to, to have the, the pipe come through here. So that's what I'll be doing because I don't want to be fighting with this trash can to get those PVC pipes in there. All right guys, so moving forward to the uh, piping for the drainage. We're using a PVC pipe. I'm using a one and a half. I'm going to do two drains and they're both going to be one and a half coming on into the uh, the pond here. So let's measure. We're going to do one and a half. I'm going to grab a little dab of the Dawn hand soap. And I'm just going to gently moisten the seal insert that's it bring it in what this is going to do now like i said i put a 45 degree angle on this one on both of them actually so one's going to spray water down this way and the other one's going to spray water down that way. first of all pump that we went for the pond we went with actually a, a pond pump from Home Depot, which was the biggest one they had with a capacity of 3,550 gallons per hour. And the way I measured that, if it was sufficient for the pond, is that the pond is 600 gallons of water. And if you divide, you always want to cycle your tanks, the size, the volume of your tank, minimum of four times over in an hour. So 600 times six is 3,600. So it's more than plenty. It's turning over the water enough where it's going to move this water good enough where it keeps it clean and it keeps good aeration and agitation in the water. So this is what I went with. It was a little pricey. It was $1.99 at Home Depot, but we went ahead and went with the biggest one that they had available due to there being so much water that we got to go ahead and filter. So this is what it looks like. pretty big and then it comes with uh, an inch and an inch and a half fitting on the top here which is perfect because the piping that we are using for the filtration of the canister here of the, of the trash bin is one and a half so we're gonna go ahead and screw this on and most importantly this is something I saw and I thought it was very important that we do as well so we're going to be taking this small little three gallon trash bin, plastic trash bin, right? And this filter, I mean filter, this pump is going to actually come in here. I know, crazy, huh? So look at that. It's going to be in here. 
All right, so the reason for that, not only is it gonna keep the fish away from the filtration, it's also gonna be a security, kind of a, a, a safety for the pond if the canister were to drain itself, if there were to be a leak, if for whatever reason the pump would stop working, the, it would only drain, the canister will only drain the amount of water that's inside of this bin. You understand me? So it's a safety so it won't drain out the entire pond if there were to be some sort of leak or problem with the filtration. So by placing it in here, once I drill some holes out here and it passes that level, it's only gonna drain the water inside the bin, not the entire pond. So yeah, I might lose this if it runs dry, but I won't lose all my stock and all my big guys. And that's very important because they're a priority, not the pond. So like I had mentioned with the trash bin, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make some holes on the upper level of the trash bin to get the water in there. Now, with the pump inside the pond, this is what it's gonna look like. It's inside the three little gallon trash bin with the holes and then it's in there. I'm gonna run the pipe straight up in between here and over the top. We already have this ready to go. Those are the pipes coming in to in and then we have the two outs here. All right, now I'm gonna show you guys real quick what I'm using to hold the media inside of there. Right here, I'll be using milk crates. I was able to get these milk crates and this is what I'm actually gonna be using to hold the media. And these two are gonna go in here. Just like that. And if you come over here, the media, the two crates are in here. So I made this up here. This pipe is going to come in here, right? Just like that. It's going to be up here. And what this is going to do is that instead of the water just shooting straight from here all over the place, it's going to, I went ahead and drilled. I drilled all these holes to make it like a spray bar. I drilled all these small little holes and I capped off the end here. So what it's going to do, it's going to stop all that water from just shooting out here and it's gonna just spray it on evenly on top of the floss and then work its way down. Make sense? Hope so. And also, very important, I didn't cement this or glue this onto this pipe here because if I need to pull this stuff out to change out the media and all that stuff, this is the one piece of the piping where I cannot have it cemented. I need to be able to remove it so I can move and change all the floss, the media, whatever, and then once I'm done, I go ahead and put it back. tip for biomedia you don't need to go crazy and spend a ton of money uh, I know there's a lot of things out there that, that cost a lot of money and they tend to advertise it like if it's the best listen it doesn't make a difference I use the bio bricks from uh, Amazon you can buy a case of it I believe it brings like 50 and it's ceramic these ceramic bricks it has a ton of surface area in it for it, to, for it to hold and have healthy beneficial bacteria in it that will sustain whatever it is you're setting up. So I use the bio bricks. I got it for not too, not too expensive on Amazon. And another thing that you guys can get that's super cheap and it works is pot scrubbies. Yes, for your kitchens, pot scrubbies. You can get these at the dollar store. Um, it works. Like I said, you guys don't have to go crazy and buy all these expensive name brand bio media you don't need none of that you can literally use some bio bricks ceramic bricks and go ahead and get yourself some pot scrubbies from the dollar store and you're good to go a bucket of bio balls sitting in the garage i wasn't using it and what better time to use it than now i'm stuffing and i'm cramming this with as much bio media as i can obviously for the more water that there is so uh these were just sitting there and i got some ceiling diffuser these are all items guys that i had mentioned that you can get in home depot this is a, a ceiling diffuser that they use for the top of those, uh, yeah, ceiling diffuser. So I'm gonna cut a piece off, I'm gonna block it off so when I add my polyfill, which this is gonna be the floss, that's gonna pick up the debris and the poop and all the stuff, this is what's gonna clean the water. When I put it on top, it's not gonna get tangled up in the bio bulb. That's 
watching the video. How I had mentioned in the other video, if you guys haven't watched it yet, go ahead and, and check it out. This is what I always use for filter floss. It's cheap and you can't beat it. It works great. It keeps your water crystal, crystal clear. And the best part of it is cheap. You guys can pick this up a bag of, uh, what is this? I believe this is like a 20, a 20 ounce bag. You can pick this up for like six bucks. And depending how much you, of it you use, it'll last you a good amount of time. So everything is ready to go, be placed inside of the canister and start the pump up and get this thing rolling. As I mentioned, I have all the biomedia in the bottom to milk crates. I zip tied them together so all the media stays in there and it's not floating around with an additional layer here of bio balls. And then I got my polyfill for my floss. And I'm gonna go ahead and place it in here. Beautiful. And we're gonna start the pump up and you guys are gonna see how this thing flows. I tested out a few minutes ago and I'm talking about some serious water flow. Check it out. You guys are probably wondering, JC, what are you doing? Yes, I'm drilling a ton of holes on this four inch PVC. And the reason for that is because my heater is gonna go in here. The reason for that is because since I'm putting it inside the pool pond, it is a tarp and the fish are obviously in there. There's nowhere to put a heater. The heater is gonna go in here. I'm gonna net this off with a zip tie and some netting and the heater will be right in the middle. I'm making the holes so the heater will obviously heat the water through the PVC pipe and the fish won't get burnt neither will the tarp get burnt. Go ahead and slide this behind the filter back here. Go. And just like that guys, we have everything running, everything installed. Now we're just missing the fish and we're gonna go ahead and lay the net once it gets here. So obviously none of the fish are jumping out or no birds or critters are out here trying to eat my fish. So catch you guys in a minute once I grab the big guys from the 350 and bring them on over. First one in guys is Billy. Billy is gonna do the honors of coming into the new pond. Be free Billy to your new home. What is this? What is this? Wow, he's big. He's huge. Ooh. We're introducing Spotted Gar into his new home. There you go, buddy. Number three. Look at the size, guys, of this Jaguar. This is a Jaguar cichlid, a male, and he is stunning. He is massive. I've never seen one this big. He is wild caught. Go ahead, buddy. This is my favorite, my all-time favorite, the silver arowana, and he's massive. Check him out. Oh, there you go, buddy. Your new home. Oh, he's gorgeous. All right, so I got the vulture catfish here. Oh, vulture. He's gone massive since we got him. We had him when he was only 10 inches, and look at him now. Your new home, buddy. The other way, other way, other way. You go the other way. There you go. This one, we got the blood parrot cichlid. I don't like using this net, but... So check her out. How beautiful. Look how big she is. She's okay, she's not hurt. But she is a beautiful, beautiful. Go on, man. We got both tiger Oscars. Go on. There you go. So this is the peacock bass. I've had him for a while, he's wild caught as well. Peacock bass, coming in. Ooh, feisty. This is bread. My little red tail catfish. No, don't fight, don't fight. Yes, 
He is my absolute baby. He actually bought me this. He got me this one. He was just little two inches. And look at him now. Look at the monster he is now. This is marble. It's a marble Akara catfish. And he is pushing, wow, push, he is pushing a healthy 22 inches. Right now he's dark, obviously he's stressed. So we're gonna go ahead and place him in here and let him be. Wow, he's big. Yeah, he's big. So we got the Vicer and we call him Dozer. He is a big fella. Let's get you out of here, bud. Hey guys, so it being 72 hours since we've installed the pool pond, today we're just working on finishing up, emptying out the 350 gallon aquarium because hopefully by today uh, I have someone that's going to come and pick it up. And as we're doing this, as I'm removing the substrate, if you guys can look down here, as I'm removing the substrate because I'm going to be adding some of the substrate to the canister. So as I was removing the substrate from the 350 and I'm making my way over here, it just happened. And I'm glad it happened. I'm not glad it happened, but I'm glad it if it did happen, that it happened the moment that we were here. As I opened the sliding door, the arowana, Juana, was here right here in front of me where I am right now. She was splopping around on the ground. You could even see some of her blood as she was jumping around. And I'm, like I said, I, I hate that it happened, but I'm glad that if it did happen, that we were here to catch it. And this is guys, this is it's so important. If you own any arowanas, arowanas are infamous escape artists. And if you guys look over here in the pool pond, we have the entire pool pond netted, netted tight with clamps, we have, have 12 clamps coming around the entire pool pond with even zip ties. And she still managed to escape. She came out through here. If you can see the wet spot underneath here. So this opening right here, I have to fix that immediately. And you know what, that's bad on me. I should have known better. Uh, I didn't think she would see that, but apparently I was wrong. She's smarter than I think. So she did make her way out of here right now and was flopping about four feet away from the pool pond. Thankfully, we were able to save her and put her back in the pool pond. She's okay. Uh, she's probably just a little stressed, obviously, from popping around on the concrete. But guys, I can't stress it enough. If you have an arowana, you need to need to secure the smallest of gaps. If not, it's a recipe for disaster and you'll possibly lose your little one, okay? So man, wow, uh, that freaked me out for a bit. I'm glad she's okay now. So going back to what I was doing. This is the official goodbye, guys. It's been a real one. It's been fun. I've enjoyed this in the time that I've had it, in the short amount of time I've had it. It's coming up on a year. And overall, I am grateful for, for having this thing. But it's time. It's time to move on to bigger, better things. And it's going off to a good home. It's someone I personally know. And he's very serious about the hobby, so I'm not concerned about, uh, you know, it not being taken care of or going to somewhere where it's supposed to be. So goodbye to you. They'll be here in a few to pick it up. All right, guys. So recapping the build, the project, um, we have the last piece of the puzzle, which came in today, which I'll be installing, but I'm not going to show you that. I already showed you that a little earlier. Is the uh, 800 watt heater? I'm going to have two 800 watt heaters running in the 600 gallon. Because initially I had one in the 350, but now I need another one due to the more water. So guys, recapping. Money-wise, we're approximately $700 into this build. Uh, Work-wise, I'd say it's moderate. It could be done with an entire day or two days of work. But overall, it's a fun project. I highly suggest it to anybody that's looking to do something for their fish. And yes, uh, overall, great experience. If you guys have any questions regarding the build or the fish, go ahead and comment them down below and I'll answer them. And regarding the materials and the items that I use for this build, I'll be linking them down below in the description. And as always, guys, I appreciate you. The support is always very, very much appreciated. Uh, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.